Halloween everyone. Today's video is the last Halloween video for this year, which is incredibly sad, at least if you're me, because Halloween is the best time of year in my opinion. I love Halloween and spooky stuff. For this video, because this is right at the end of the season, I decided to do something that wouldn't have to only be for Halloween, but it is a skull, so we have cute little skull stud earrings that have succulents surrounding the skull. Everything is sculpted, the skull is sculpted, the succulents are sculpted. It is so cute and so earthy feeling. I, I really like it. I hope you guys like these as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. We are going to begin by creating our skull. That's the first thing you want to do and really keep in mind how big it is compared to how big that you're going to want it to be when it's in your ear. I know a lot of times when I'm sculpting or doing anything with stud earrings, I used to make a lot of jewelry with polymer clay back in the day before I started sculpting with acrylic. Um, but it was really easy to get them to be too big where they wouldn't fit comfortably on the ear because they would end up poking my cheek. So because of that, it's just a really great thing to always kind of keep in mind what's comfortable. If you have any questions on what you find would be the right size, the best thing to do would be to grab your largest pair of earrings that you have, not largest as in longest, but largest around that fit nicely in your ear. And then once you have that, you're like, okay, this is the size I can go up to. And if it would help you to trace that earring, flip it over on a piece of paper, trace it to give you a frame of how big to sculpt your skull in, you could do it that way. Otherwise, you know, you can even take a little tape measure I would use a fabric like a clothing tape measure and I would hold it up so that you put the flat end, the zero on your face and then measure from your cheek, the closest point on your cheek to where the hole in your ear is. And then whatever that amount is, let's say it's, if, I'm going to work in centimeters, um, let's say it's a centimeter and a half, take off a good chunk of that and be like, okay. And that seems like a huge amount. Maybe it wouldn't even be that big, but say, okay, I can't go anywhere near that size. I have to shrink that down because as you move, at least for me, I've got very flexible ears. I've got a lot of really flexible cartilage. Um, my ears, the bottom of my ears, if it, I've got an earring in, it'll move a little bit too. And like as I, my hair will push my earring against my face. So you want to bring that down, but that'll give you an idea of how much space you have because you know, okay, well, if it's a centimeter and a half, I certainly can't go to two centimeters because that won't even go in my ear at all. So maybe if it's a centimeter and a half, go one centimeter from each side of the post at maximum. Still possibly think about scaling that down. After all of this lovely conversation, we are going to finish sculpting the skull, add all of the details to the skull. I love sculpting skulls. There are so many different um, techniques. I'm going for moderately realistic for this. If you want it to be cutesy, you could certainly do that. If you're going cutesy, I would recommend making the eye sockets hearts instead of the typical kind of almost tipped ear... Um, teardrop shape but make them asymmetrical so that one is slightly bigger than the other one that's always one of my just favorite like oh this is such a cute little skull looks and it is going to simplify it another thing that you could not do to simplify it is you wouldn't have to add those bones that connect your lower mandible up to your skull so that little skinny part on the sides you could simply take that off you wouldn't have to do that lower jaw at all that would E make this easier because that's a whole section that you don't have to worry about same thing those little lines on the side of the skull above the eye sockets on um that kind of create that indent between the front of your face and towards the back of your head you can skip those you can make that all smooth there are so many things you can do that just make it easier i am now going to take acrylic and i'm going to be adding some of the shading and some of the depth so i'm going to be doing the black inside the eye sockets black inside the nasal cavity and then with the whatever pigment is left on my brush from doing those areas, I'm going to start doing the shading on the skull. If I need to get a little bit more acrylic, I will grab a very, very wet bead of black acrylic, blend that out. If this is a technique you are not very good at, you're like, I don't know how somebody shades with acrylic. I get that comment fairly frequently. It's one of those, you have to kind of break the rules and use your acrylic wrong because you have to have it so, so wet. If it's still something that just doesn't work for you, you can do that with paint instead of the acrylic. Now that we have that done, we can start sculpting all of the different succulents. And can I just say there are so many kinds of succulents and there are so many colors of succulents that you can have so much fun with this. Okay, so the first one I'm doing, I made a row of five petals that were a little bit bigger and then five that were smaller. And I'm going to sculpt the center of it, make a blob of my green acrylic, and then start just sculpting the shape of that very inner inner part of the succulent leaves. Now I'm going to just kind of define it a little bit further and then leave that piece attached to your nail form backing. Don't pick that one up. If it comes off, that's one thing, but if you can, it'll work a lot easier and it'll be a lot more pleasant to sculpt the rest of the succulent if you leave that center piece on the nail form backing. 
I'm going to take another very tips of all of those leaves. I'm going to be adding a it's kind of a aqua sky blue color, like a bright sunny day, which in October in Wisconsin, we don't have anymore. We don't have bright sunny days. Those are a thing of the past. And then I'm going to take that same color and add a little bit to the tops of all the leaves that are that are on that center piece. Like I said, try to leave that piece down. What's going to be hard is when you pick the rest of the petals or leaves. I always want to say petals. When you pick the rest of the leaves off the nail form backing, leaving that other one in place, I'm going to squeeze a bit of nail glue onto my nail form backing right by the leaves so that I can easily pick up one at a time, dip it into the nail glue, try to orient it with my little tweezers, and then hold it on to the center. This is the system that you're going to be using to assemble the succulents as you are doing this you mine just got loosened from the nail form backing which is going to make everything a lot more difficult but you're going to just kind of slowly take your time and see there it goes went flying if you can leave it attached to the nail form backing it will hold itself in position and then when you are pressing the little leaves onto it you can actually use a bit of pressure and it'll make it so they stick better it'll just make the whole thing easier However, you can't do this. So after I have finished that part, I'm going to pick it up since it's already released and I'm going to add some more of the green acrylic to the back of each leaf. And then after I have rounded it out on the back side, because succulents, they're, most of them at least, are very, very thick. They're very poofy feeling. So we're going to add that second layer of the acrylic to the back. Make sure that the side that you sculpted forward was the side that you were working on that was up on the nail form backing. It's the side that had the blue color on it already. Then add the blue color to the back of each of the leaves. And then after you're done with it at this point, and it's got this nice filled out shape, it should have some strength now too. And then we can go through and you can do the second layer. My second layer ended up getting a little too long when I was sculpting them. So I'm going to take my manicure scissors and I'm going to cut the points off of each of the leaves. Luckily, the acrylic is so thin that a manicure scissors will snip that very, very quickly and it won't crack, hopefully. If your acrylic is cracking when you try to cut it with the little nail scissors, then it's probably that it got too thick. Hopefully it shouldn't crack, but I don't know if you notice this when I'm cutting them. This is in general for any little nail art project you're working with that's like this that you may want to cut when you pick up your pieces you want to really support them see now i'm losing stuff here you want to really support them with your fingers so as you pick up the new one and you're going to snip it either support it with a tweezers or something but hold it tightly so that it doesn't have that twisting action when it's being cut that it seems like it's secured i'm also going to mention that this succulent was the one that gave me the biggest problems just in general it got it came off of the nail form backing it i had leaves fall off whole bit after you do have everything attached take some clear acrylic and just float it over the bottoms of all of the leaves so that you really secure them in place we don't want them to fall off that's not the goal but until this point you really can't do that because it would create bulk between the layers of leaves but once they're all in place really make sure that they are attached well then i'm going to take the green i'm going to add the second layer of acrylic to all of the backs of the larger the larger row and then after that's done same thing that little bit of teal on the backs the set of earrings because the succulents do kind of stick up you don't know where they're going to be viewed from depending on you know how you position them so you want them to look nice from almost all sides just not the bottom the bottom is kind of your <laughs> your get all jail free card but the rest of it you want to make sure that you are very careful to make it look really nice for the next succulent i'm going to make a spikier one so i'm going to take a darker shade of green acrylic just to get some variety and make a bunch of little pointy spikes then i'm going to dip the first ones into that nail glue and i'm going to try to write them on my nail form backing against the first one this is a little bit uh a little bit hinky but you want to just try to kind of get them in place on that first one and that one can be attached to the nail form backing still after you have those three that are pretty much together i'm going to pick them up and set them into a glob of that same color acrylic that i've been using so far and then while that acrylic is still a little bit pliable i'm going to pick up and put as many of those other leaves that are around push them in once it seems like they aren't going to stick anymore dip them into nail glue and then push them in the acrylic can still be a little bit spongy feeling and not hold the leaves very well so don't push your luck too far without adding the nail glue the great thing is if there's a little bit of moisture left in your acrylic it'll make that nail glue set really quickly and it'll be a really strong finish I'm going to add a little bit of clear acrylic to the back side of this succulent and try to push it between the leaves. And then with pink, I'm going to add a little pink highlight to the tips. Same thing, I love that we can add so much color with succulents. There's so many different color combinations and make sure that you're 
pre-planning what colors you want to go together so that you have, you know, your greens and your side color sort of set together before you start working and then pick out the succulents that you want for each one so that you don't have a, oh man, I should have done this moment. Now with a aqua blue color, I'm going to be making a gradient succulent. I'm going to do the first row with three and they're very triangular shaped very triangular shaped leaves that are that more of like a green blue and then more of a blue blue I'm going to make some that are slightly wider then even more of a blue almost leaning periwinkle I'm going to make another set that are even wider and then because I'm doing this in a funny order I'm going to take my greenest color and make the thinnest section now using whatever color you're using for that thinnest small section make a little ball shape on your nail form backing next to them pick up one of the leaves, dip it in the nail glue and hold it on. As you can see, I do have an extra three of each of them. That is because for all of these succulents, I did make two, two of them. I made a duplicate. That way, when I go to assemble my earrings, same thing with the skull, I made two of them and do them together. So make two of everything as you go. The reason to do that is by the time you finished, you might forget exactly how big your shapes were and then you're going to have different sizes and it's gonna be uneven. Your best bet is to do everything together. After you have that first set attached to that middle sphere and you've really rounded out the backs of these ones, you're going to pick up the second color, dip them into nail glue, and then alternating in location so that you're placing row two in between the cracks of the petals or leaves of row one so that it's an every other so that it goes around very similar to sculpting a rose or drawing a rose. If you've ever done that before, that kind of gives you an idea of how you want to space these. Then you're going to round out the backs of these ones. As you can see, this is working way better because it is staying on the nail form backing. Once you've used your nail form backing for one or two things, it gets a little stickier, which usually is somewhat of an irritant because your pieces don't come off quite as easily. But for this particular circumstance, it is a bonus because your succulent stays in position, or at least a little bit easier. I'm going to take the same, that bluer color, and I'm going to be adding that to the back of this row. And we're going to continue alternating. As you can see, if you hadn't been widening the leaves as you went down the row, it would make it so that they wouldn't cover the spaces between. So you need to make sure as you're sculpting all of these ones that you do give them a good amount of extra width from each layer going down. See, that one did not want to come off. This is a little bit of a sticky nail form backing. And then dip, place. After you have that one done, grab the next one, dip and place. And then it's a little hard to add the acrylic to the backside of that last row because it is so close to being flat to the nail form backing that if you want to, it might be easier to just pick it up before you do that. And then with some white acrylic on this one, I'm going to add a little bit of white at the very middle of each of them, just to almost look like it's got a little spike on the very middle. I have, we have two succulent, three succulent baskets in my house and I use those as my inspiration for all my succulents. Using some clear acrylic, I'm going to add that to the back of my earring. I'm going to go over the post just a few times to make sure that it adds X like prongs and holds it to my skull. And then using clear acrylic, I'm going to be attaching my succulents. I did pre-plan where I planned to place them. I also planned which set of succulents I thought looked the best together. Like I said, you want to make sure that you sculpt them all together so that they are very close to the same size. With that being said, they probably won't be exactly the same size. And so if you have all three of the biggest together, it's going to make your earrings look uneven. However, if you have them mixed up so that maybe one of them is a little bigger on this side, but then they're smaller up above or however it works out, it'll make them look fairly even. Like they still go together, even though they're a little different. But the fact that they're a little different, I think adds to, adds to the charm of a hand created piece of jewelry. It makes it that much more special. And if you're planning to give these to somebody, those little differences are really going to bring the set to life and it's going to be just that much more, that much more important. So I'm going to take and I'm going to grab a bunch of my pointy bottom crystals. They aren't something I get to use very often because I don't find them to be the most convenient in most nail applications, like actually on a nail. However, they do work really well to go in and under and around a lot of the, a lot of the succulent bases and they kind of cover up some of that, um, I don't know, less adorable little acrylic kind of globs that are holding everything together. 
So using those, you can nicely place them. If you want to use jewelry gel, you certainly can. Otherwise, for me, I was using just some clear acrylic. I'm going to apply a thin coat of a glittery mix to the back of the skull just to kind of finish off the back. I thought it made it look a little bit more complete. And then I'm going to take some acrylic paint and add very small amounts of details to my skull. Most of it was already done. If you did not do all of that shading with acrylic, you should have done that with acrylic paint prior to attaching the succulents, and then you would need to apply top coat. Because I did that with acrylic, I don't need to apply top coat first because the acrylic won't get messed up by the gluing and attaching of more acrylic stuff. And then because of that, I'm just going to do these final few details. And I'm not going to use top coat at all because this set of earrings isn't going to be washing their hands. That is the main thing for applying top coat over acrylic that is painted with acrylic paint. If you're not going to be doing stuff like washing hands, working with your hands, you don't really need a top coat thing. So if you're making an acrylic project that isn't going to be worn, don't bother top coating. And that is the case with this set of earrings. No need for top coating. And they're done and you can add the back on them and wear them around and they are so cute. I hope you guys like them as much as I do and happy Halloween you guys. Have a safe night and enjoy, enjoy the candy. Bye.